Hey everybody, it's me, Uncle Greg, a.k.a. the Free American Spirit. And you're looking at two of those 5,000 kilowatt batteries that I ordered for the solar system. So we're going to get into these in just a little bit. They just arrived. But before we install them, I have to go to the shed and we got to make some room to put that battery rack in. So let's go. All right, as usual, before we can get started to do this project with batteries, I have another project to do and that's to clear all this space out so that I can put the battery rack we assembled a while back into the corner there and I just got to figure out where I'm going to put all this this junk so bear with me to you it'll be seconds to me it'll be forever so let's hear a word from our sponsor and we'll get right at it That's right kids, I sponsor myself, or actually people like you sponsor me by hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel. We're going to talk about a mistake on this battery rack holder that I made in just a minute before we do the batteries. If you really love me, share the video, put the comments in the comment section, YouTube loves that, and use that Amazon link. So let's get to it. What did I do wrong? What? I did something wrong? These gussets right here? You see where these batteries go, they lay right in here. These gussets go on the bottom. And the reason for that is they have four little holes and they are made so they can accept casters. Now I'm not gonna go to Lowe's and get casters because it's a long trip. So that's really heavy, but I would advise you to put casters on it. That way you can roll it around because that thing weighs, you know, 60 pounds and each battery is 90 pounds. Or, if you're like me and it's just going to go in one spot and never move, that's fine. But I'm going to switch them out anyways, just in case one day I want to put casters on. And then that piece down there will go up here. So that's why, you, you know, you watch the videos and follow and get updates. Because improvements are always being made. Alrighty, much better. That's on the top. Those are on the bottom, the way they're supposed to be. So we're ready to put batteries in. I probably will put casters on. I'm gonna put a wood top on here just so I can put things on top. So uh, let me go get my wife so she can haul these batteries over because they're really heavy. They're like 90 pounds. And as usual, I got some screws left over for my screw collection. That's nice. Found those when I was cleaning up down there. All right, kids, so I went and got the wife to do all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. She got the battery out of the box for me, set here. It's about 90 pounds. And so there's the first look at it. Gonna have her drag it over to the rack for me. It's a good thing I got her because I'm such a girly man. But the battery <laughs> came with a, a, a black and a red lead. Came with these screws which attach it to the rack. But we already have those in the rack, I think. And then I'm hoping that this wire is the communication wire because I didn't see one in the box. And that was taped to the outside. So I'll let, be careful, don't cut the wire. So hopefully Rick will pull out some da, communication da, da, da. wires there. Da, 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 da. Well, there's one. Two. I need to... Oh, there's two? Well, there you go. Just two on our page. Oh. So I don't know exactly how those hook up yet, but we will figure it out. Okay, before you slide the big battery in there, take these screws out. Or you'll be pulling the battery back out like my wife did. And now she's got to put it back in. I'm just making extra work for her. These screw holes don't line up, so guess what? We're not putting any screws to hold them in place, but it don't matter because it ain't going anywhere anyways. All right, Ricky's got the got the batteries installed because she's a badass. <laughs> so those two little screws don't fit on the top one either, but like I said, they're not going anywhere. So it's been three days now. Rick and I are out of traction. We're going to try to wire it up. And let me go get what you'll need to wire these up, and I'll show you. Stand by. All right, to put these things together, you're obviously going to need the wire that they sent you. Those are going to hook up to the bus bars and the battery. Um, I got the two communication cables, which will hook these batteries, but it won't be long enough to go to the grow watts. But basically, you're going to need some crimpers. These are from Temco. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, they're pretty expensive, but... They'll do some really big wire and they'll do they're adjustable so they'll do you know various sizes and also the handles will telescope out so you can get some good leverage when you're crimping stuff on this is the battery it's a number two wire i think a two watt or two wire o2 
it's very flexible that came with my battery rack since I have a 48 volt battery that'll probably be fine it may even work on 24 but just to be safe I went and got one out wire from Amazon I'll have a link in the description to that as well and then this battery cable that came with the battery rack has some crimps that will crimp um, or I may not use that like I said this kit also I believe has crimps inside I have to open that up but I also bought like a box of different crimps and you'll need also some heat shrink if you want to be real professional and cover those up I'm, I can't remember if I bought a heat shrink or not I guess we'll find out when we do the video I have opened up the kit of one-aught wire and like I thought it comes with 10 foot of wire versus that has eight foot so that's you know I may or may not need that depending how I have to run these around and it does come with the big lugs I like these lugs better and it comes with the heat shrink both positive and negative you can cut the size so that's what we're going to use even though it's probably a little overkill and I've got to go find I've got a, a fuse and a breaker to use for this I really don't need it because if you look at these batteries these batteries have a built-in breaker on them and a, with a fuse in it I believe so that's really nice and they also have a, a capacitor not a capacitor but a diode in there not a diode come on Greg <sighs> transistor reducer my god a resistor there you go they also have a resistor in there so when you do power these on it'll send a small amount of uh, power to the capacitor that's in the grow watt and you won't burn out you know your capacitor or blow up your grow watt or whatever so that's a really nice feature so let me go get some more parts and we'll be right back all right so these are the same wire cutters i used in a previous video that i'm going to use to cut that cable when it comes time i'll have a link in the description and this is the tool that i told you you push up like this you place it on there and you can see i've already cut this one end and so now it's ready for that connection i haven't cut that other end out yet so let's put one of those connectors on there and then we'll break out the, the crimper and see how that works here you can see that i put my lug on there it's a one knot three eighths lug for this wire fits pretty good and of course we will put some heat shrink there just so that little bit doesn't arc or whatever touch something so let's get out the crimpers all right this little scale it shows the wire you're using in numbers so you use that top screw up there to dial it into the one you're using and i've got to dial mine down just a little bit more for a one knot and then we'll crimp this it's pneumatic so it should do pretty well and i'll show you what that crimp looks like all right here you can see i've got the lug in there and you see where the little round part is flush i pushed this wire in all the way i'm doing it again just to make sure that it's all the way down in there and now we're gonna crimp that booger well i don't know if i can do this with one hand all right, there's the crimp it's on tighter than can be but when i wiggled it again to show you i had it in there tight i then took that thing off of the center here and so it kind of went sideways so i'm going to test that with some pliers see how tight it is i don't think it's going to hurt anything but you know if you're a perfectionist you would want to cut that off and do another one so it all looks pretty okay look at that one that was much better it did pop up this way just a little bit but it's on there snugger than can be so it takes a little time to get used to using that i'm an old guy so and I gotta use two hands when I do this. I can't do try to do it one hand and hold it. But anyways, I love these crimpers. They're very easy to crimp. They automatically go to the right position, you know, when you stop. And that thing ain't going nowhere. All right, this is the breaker that we're going to be using. Um, I'll have a link to this in the description. It's 150 amp, 48 volt DC max. Make sure that you use a DC breaker, not a 120 breaker or AC breaker rather but better off if you ask your electrician because once again I'm not an electrician I'm not a solar guy and you may want to see what they recommend for your application all right kids we have our breaker mounted 
I've got my first positive wire going up. That's a nine millimeter. I think that's a 14. Let me double check that. Yep. So I got them snug pretty good. The heat shrink is nice. And just to let you know, the heat shrink will fit over the ends. It's a pretty big, wide heat shrink. So I put the heat shrink in half. So that's a half. Then I doubled it in half again and cut it. And then I doubled it in half again and cut it. So I got eight pieces that size, right? But I still have half left for later. Just to show you what's going on here, each of these terminals have these little plastic clips that clip on after you put the wires on. So we're going to take the positive wires and go to these small screws on the positive bus. Negative wire, small screw to the small screws on the negative bus. And then we'll take these big wires, cut them the length, and put them on these bigger screws up here. Now to get those in there, you can bust a couple of these off. So when you put the covers back on, you know, they kind of go in there and the covers still snap. And then after those wires are on, you put those little plastic covers back. Which I've already lost one, but I'll probably make a door for this. If you were, if you got kids running around, you know, it's just me and the wife. I'd make a door that way the kids can't get in there and mess around with it. And uh, but before I do all that, I'm going to check the bolts on these batteries to see where they're at, see where they're charged, and if they're different, I'll hook one battery up and let the system charge it, and then I'll shut that battery off, you know, with the breaker, and then when that's fully charged, I'll do the other one and I'll check them again so that they're fairly close together in charge before we start them up and then I got to get a longer cable to go to the grow up but we'll hook up those 45s for communications and we'll have to find out what those dip pins are you know so that the grow up can read both of them bear with me make sure before you go to test your batteries with your voltage meter you have to flip the batteries on so these terminals are dead without that switch on. I wasn't thinking. I sat there, kept connecting them, going, what's going on? Oh, my God, they're dead. Anyways, both of the batteries, in my case, read 52.8 volts. So they're not quite all the way there, but they're the same exact level. So I'm going to hook them up, and I'll turn the system on, and the system should charge both of them, whatever, as soon as I find what those dip pins are but I'm not gonna have to worry about that because I'm not gonna be doing any communication right at this point until I get that other cable got the wires done this wire looks kinda funky I wonder if it's messed up in there but hopefully it's not it feels weird find out when we turn it on this screw here this screw and this screw are all where you hook the batteries to this one goes to the little insulator and keeps the bar in place same with that one right there so you don't want to use those and these are for main i guess because these wires the lugs won't fit on those big ones so we're going to hook these mains up i just wish that these screws were in a little bit better place i don't know what's still looking at this wire i don't know what the deal is with that feels weird these all feel good and there you go so let's do these last two crimps and hook the main cables up. All right, as you can see, I've got the big negative connected, large positive connected. I ran the wires back behind those brackets so they wouldn't rub on these little sharp edges here. Did the same thing there. I didn't cut them the length because that gives me a little bit of slack if I have to pull this out and, and uh, dust a little bit back there or whatever. I don't have to disconnect stuff. And if I ever decide to put those casters on, I can pull it out and tip it up or something. We'll figure it out. Anyway, so the big moment is here. Um, I really love that crimper. It's got a great warranty, by the way. Did a good job on those crimps, so I'm really happy I got that. But now we're going to make sure that this is off. So the grow rod is off. I'm going to put the fuse on. Because when I flip these, then it's going to send that little bit of juice to that GoPro to charge up the, um, what do you call it, the capacitors. So hopefully these will go on. 
It always says turn the GoPro off while you put the batteries on. The GoPro is off. And unlike the unlike the uh, solar, it doesn't just pop on by itself. Why not? Give me some kind of need. Oh, 04, I think that's low battery charge. Uh, let me turn on the solar. Of course, it's way late here, so now I'm getting a 20 and an 04. And I don't know what a 20 and an 04 is. So now I've got to grab the manual. Bear with me. So I just got off of the phone with technical support just to make sure I'm doing things right. These are the RS-485 ports, so this first one will go up to the grow watt. Then the second one will go to the first, you know, connection there in the second battery, and you would get so on and so forth. So I've got to go to uh, Best Buy or somewhere. I have Ethernet cables, but the guy told me you need a Cat5 cable. It really works the best. He said a regular Ethernet cable might work. He wasn't sure because they changed stuff. So just to make sure, I'm going to get a Cat5 cable to run up to the grow lot and then we'll fire those up so it'll be a day or so before I get into town. So you can see it's charging. So I had this set on option five. I had it set for LI lithium, but I couldn't get the batteries to communicate. I've got a call in the service. I don't know exactly what's wrong. I bought a category six cable to hook up, which should have all the speed it needs. Uh, the guy told me cat five or higher, so I got a cat six. So in option five, I put it back to user defined. And when I did that, before it was flashing error codes, like the batteries weren't talking. So once I put it in user, you know, setting, instead of lithium ion, it went fine. So right now I got the PV on. I've got the batteries hooked up. It's flashing, charging. If that was like solid it would mean they're completely done i'm not the best at reading this manual anyways pb's on the batteries are charging i got that battery charging and that battery charging of course the light works so the pb's are doing pretty good um i did have my amp meter out here and the pb array is putting out some pretty good watts or excuse me volts and watts because i was getting really good amps coming through there so if I set this amp meter in DC, you can see on the negative side, I'm pulling 28.3. On the positive side, well, I can't get to the positive. Let's get down here to the positive. On the positive side, if I get onto the big one, which I can't find because it's buried back there, but we'll do the, you can see that each side, I mean, each battery is 13.3 on positive, 10.3. Thirteen point six on the negative. Thirteen point seven. I might not have had that one all the way clipped. Yeah, I didn't have a clip. Thirteen point five. Thirteen point five. So they're charging evenly. Evenly. Those two uh, buttons right there are fully lit, so it's on the you know pro trying to charge it up to seventy five percent. And I guess when the other one starts blinking and goes full, it'll be a hundred percent. So I don't know exactly why these aren't communicating, but I'll get it figured out. I've been messing with those dip switches. Um, every time you do something, you have to shut these off, let it reset. And then before you turn everything on, you need to make sure your breaker is on. This is off. You know, this is off. And then I got to turn the battery on, which is down here, which is on. Then turn this on. Then turn the PV on. And everything seems to go fine. I made a quick call to um, tech support. They did tell me what I did wrong. So if you remember before, these should all be down. And I had all those down too. I thought I had one up, but I didn't. So that was one part because I'm blind. The second part is, if you notice now, it's charging pretty good. And it's 
blinking trying to charge that last 25%, but run is staying solid. Before, run was not staying solid, it was blinking because I wasn't communicating. And the reason was when I run this wire up, let me show you up under here. This is like one of my duh lawn moments. You look up under there, I hope you can see that. I had this plugged into the RS-485 just like down there, but on these new batteries in the grow lot, you plug it into the BMS. That's why it wasn't communicating. So to hook this up, you go to the BMS, and then you come down to your battery, you put it in the first one, your first batteries are all down, then your second battery is anything but all down. They actually have a chart if you wanted to name that number one or whatever. And so this BMS cord from the grow lot goes here, and then the RS-485 goes to either one of those down at the bottom. So that was a simple fix. Everything's running good. We're charging. We're on automatic lithium-ion now in the menu in five. So life is good. So I've got my lawnmower battery charging. I've got my drill battery charging. I've got the light bulb on. I think that's only about a 50 watt or a 40 watt. I got the uh, dehydrator going, so that pulls a pretty good amount of juice. I really don't have anything else to plug in right at the moment that I can see around here because everything is electric. So that's just a little bit what's going on. I was going to try to put the dryer on, but I think with the batteries charging, it'll probably hit an error code 7 and I'll have to reset something. So, yeah, we're here. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Is it plugged in? Okay, it's plugged in. Put that over there. Now oh, we gotta turn on the thingamajiggy. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's running. And there's error code 7. It's getting overloaded. See how long it takes for it to go off. And there it goes. It went off. So now, I'll have to restart everything. So let me turn this back off. And restart everything. I gotta turn that off. I gotta turn that off. I gotta turn that off. So everything is off. And then I'll have to come down here. Now they're still showing run. It didn't hit the air. So those are still on. So normally I would flip those down and flip them on one at a time. Come back over here. Turn that on. Turn this on. And let's see if they're still in the run mode. Nope, see that flipped the alarm. So I did that wrong. So we'll leave that on. We will flip this. Flip that. We start this back up. We oh. start that back up. You heard that just click on. I guess. Now it's in the run mode. That came back on because we got some battery juice. Now we'll put on the PV array. This is not on on. Put on the PV array. Turn that on. There it goes. It's sending juice to the house. And in just a minute here it should say that the batteries are low. And switch over. Come on man. Oh it is char it says charging. So it's blinking charging. It just hasn't Switch there, there it goes, and now it's charging. So, that's the video today. Thumbs up, share it, like it, all that good stuff. You know what to do. Leave some comments. And when I find out more about the dip switches, I'll, I'll tell you and uh, use that Amazon code because it helps everybody, including you and me, for free. Thanks, guys. See ya.